Hey guys, how are you going? It's your boy Scotty here and today I'm going to be doing a video on our transfer rumours. So if you're like every Raw fan or every passionate Raw fan like me, I seem to be following everything to do with the Raw in the offseason because it is a long offseason so any rumour that you hear, you're like, yes, let's go, new signing for the Raw, I can't wait. So whether it be on Twitter, Facebook, the news articles, I'm all over it and today I'm going to be bringing you all the information about the five players that we have been linked with. So a while back we heard that there was two signings that were looking very likely and it got a lot of like people thinking yes and no. The yes part was Tom Eldridge, which is a centre-back and everyone knows that we need definitely a centre-back after conceding 71 goals last year. A record high out of every A-League team ever in the history of the A-League conceded 71, go 71 goals in A-League. Something had to be doing with the defence. So that man that we'll link with is Tom Eldridge. I'll go through everyone's details in full. I'll also pop up on the screen probably on my whatever the right hand side that you're probably reading this on. It is my right hand side if you're yeah, if you're on this side hopefully. But um yeah, it'll pop up information about their like position, height, um, all their general information and also put up their stats on how they've been going in the last few years. So yeah. The other player that was linked was Roy O'Donovan, and everyone knows Roy O'Donovan if they follow the A League, he's been the bad boy of the A-League with Newcastle Jets and Central Coast Mariners receiving 10 plus games ban. One incident got 10 games ban with a with the kick to the head and the other one he had better some players plus you know he's known to be a bit of a fiery player, a bit like Borussia, Borussia was, he was a bit of a poacher as well. A lot of people thought why are we bringing so many old players in? Only one old player though which is Roy O'Donovan, 33 years old but he is an experienced player and we do have a lot of young players so I think he will be a benefit to the team. But anyway, let's go through all the stats on everyone else and who they are and what they're going to bring to the Raw. Okay, so let's start at Tom Eldridge. So his stats will just pop up over here. So Tom Eldridge is a centre-back from England. He's 28 years old, 6 foot 2, and his recent team that he played for was Motherwell. So he played a lot of games for Motherwell. He played 37 games last season, which is the whole season basically. He played 90 minutes, so he's a very fit, he's a very good player. He's tall player as well which we haven't really had in the center back where you've seen center backs are normally really tall normally we've had pretty short center backs for the position so it'll be good to have a tall center back up there to win the headers he'll be an aerial threat in the box he scored three goals and got one assist in the 37 games he played while on loan to motherwell so currently he still is owned by bury which is a league two team and which actually just got promoted to league one this season in his first loan to motherwell he got 17 appearances with one goal and then he got his second year where he got 37 appearances with three goals and one assist. Before that, he played for Blackpool from 2015 to 2017, where he played 92 games with seven goals in the League One. So you will see a pattern with the Robbie Fellow, the players he's bringing in, because he's English and he's got that background. He was looking at bringing in a lot of players that you'll see on this list from the lower leagues in England or players that have been the Australian that have gone to England and bringing or gone overseas, not getting much game time, bringing them back. So that's you'll see a pattern with that throughout this video. So I've gone through the transfer market, that's the where the main part is where I'm searching for players and who they are and information and it does give you a value of what they're worth. So for Tom Eldridge he's worth 400,000 euros which is equivalent to Stephen Morgan now team when you have a look on the raw one. So obviously at that price Stephen Morgan is in a marquee, neither will Tom Eldridge by looking at that price. So his contract ends in the 30th of June 2019, as well as mainly every other player that is off contract, that's where their contract ends. We'll be picking him up on a free, which means we'll just have to pay his wages. We're going to actually have to pay a transfer fee to the club, which is good. Corey Mayer reported the signing a while back, where they did the two signings with um, O'Donovan as well. So all the signings, um, news and stuff, and the links, I'll put them in the description so you can have a read of the articles as well. Just be careful that Courier Mail is a pay subscription, so if you have a subscription, then fine, you can read it. But if you don't, I believe that you can read one story a week free. So if this is your first story that you're reading, then you get a chance to read this free. Tom Eldred has played for the national team, but not the senior national team. He has played for the under-19, so... He was a decent player back in the day, it's just probably hard to get into the Scottish national team, especially if he is English, so um, yeah, so he, I feel, I feel like he'd be a really good signing for us. The next signing we're looking at bringing in is Aidan O'Neill. He is a former Brisbane man, not as in the club, but he was born here. So he used to play for Kenmore, which is the University of Queensland Football Club, as well as Brisbane Athletic. He attended Nundee Junior College and then moved to Brisbane Boys College. When he was a teenager, he moved overseas to go over to England for his family's work. He also pursued a football career over there and he was signed by Burnley, which is a Premier League club. 
and played a lot of teams on loan in the lower divisions. So Aiden O'Neill is a central midfielder. He's 5 foot 10 and he's 20 years old. So a lot of you guys remember him from last season where he played on loan for the Central Coast Mariners where he played 23 games, 4 goals and no assists. Before that, he had stints at Fleetwood Town and Oldham Athletic. At Fleetwood Town, which is in the League One, he got 21 games, one goal, and three assists. And the season before that, in 2017, he played in the League Two side of Oldham Athletic. At Oldham Athletic, he played 15 games for zero goals and one assist. So Aiden O'Neill has actually played three games for Burnley, so he has actually played for the Premier League club. I think he played one cup game and then a couple Premier League games, so good on him. He has got a three-year contract Would you sign in 2016 and there is an option to go to a fourth year and he pro they probably will do that. And you're thinking, you're probably thinking, how's that going to work if he goes to the Raw? So it is looking like it's going to be another loan deal for Aiden O'Neill. So he'll be loaned to the Raw to the end of the season. He is hoping to make the Australian national team. He has played for the under-23s for Socceroos and he played three games for them with a goal. He was approached actually by the Irish national team, but he said his preference to the Socceroos. So his price value actually is 500,000 euros, which is similar price to Jamie Young. So Jamie Young not being a marquee, Aiden O'Neill won't be marquee either, which is good because we have our spots all open still. Aiden O'Neill actually looks probably like the most likely to happen. One, I know the club is looking for midfielders, obviously we only have one actually registered right now, which is um, Stephen Moore. But two, they're also looking at players that are Australian and also young, but also that used to play in Brisbane or was from Brisbane. So. Aiden O'Neill basically hits all the criteria, and especially if we can get him on a loan, hopefully he does well for us. He may even sign on a deal later on in, the, in his career. So I was just looking through Aiden O'Neill's tweets, and it actually says that he, he liked a post about the move to Brisbane Roy and Loan, so, which means if he has liked something like that, you'd think that it's probably going to happen. So the boys go back to training on the 1st of July, so we'll probably hear some movement for transfers probably about the 24th of June, so about a week before the actual goes back to training, because obviously we have FFA Cup games coming up as well as some pre-season games. We need players, so they'll try to get them in probably as soon as they can so they can train with the boys and have as much pre-season as they can to hopefully gel and have a great season with under Robbie Fowler. Our third player is George Mells Jr. So George Mells is a central midfielder, 5'11 and age 22. George Mells is born in Melbourne and used to play for, if you probably remember, Adelaide United for two seasons where they won the double and then he got moved to the Dutch side and they're in Vissé for Fortuna Sittard and never played a game. So I'll go into more depth of George Mells as well. So 2018 to 2019 is his last club that he played for, Fortuna Sittard. He had a trial and then he that he did well in the trial and they signed him up for the he promoted side that they got promoted to this uh the era de Vissi and he didn't play a game for them which is unfortunate but he is released from their club now so he is hopefully going to come to the raw and i believe it's almost certain because his dad actually liked and followed me on twitter and liked some of my tweets and some of the other tweets about him coming to the raw so i'd say like aiden o'neill where they have their twitter involved where they like and stuff about it that's probably a sign that it's going to happen so Fingers crossed it does. I also forgot to say before with um, Aiden O'Neill, which is my bad, that the Burnley Express actually reported on it. So the link will be in the description where they've actually reported saying that he's looking at linking up with Robbie Fowler. So that's almost a definite when you hear stories like that happening. So from 2015 to 2017, he played for the Adelaide United where they won the double in the 2015-2016 season. He played 31 games for them for zero goals. He played his youth career at academies in, in England where he played for Chelsea from 2009 to 2011, and then Southampton from 2011 to 2014. So currently, George Mells Jr. is priced at 250,000 euros, which is similar to the price of Nick D'Agostino. And once again, Nick D'Agostino isn't a marquee, neither will George Mells. So, so like the other players that I've mentioned, their contract is ending on the 30th of the 6th, 2019, but he's already left the club, so he's a free agent, so I can see him signing pretty soon. FTBL.com.au is the actual ones that are reporting this, so their link will be in the description as you so you can read the story, but it's funny enough that they actually put a photo of Jordan O'Doherty on there instead of George Mills, so I let them know on Twitter, and that's where George Mills Sr. actually liked on my tweets and started following me from there, and I had a look through his likes, and he's gone through the Daily Oz football and the, the um, rumours there for the Roar as well, he's been liking them, so that's probably going to be set in stone that that move is going to be happening soon. So national team for George Mills, he's paid for two countries, Never has he played a senior appearance for them. So the countries that he's played for is Australia, where he's played for the under-17s. He's got three games, zero goals. And he for the under-20s, he played three games and got one goal. And he also played for the Greece under-17 team for one appearance, but didn't score and hasn't played for the Greece team since. So I'd say he's 
allegiance will be with the Socceroos if he can get selected. But in saying that, he also he must have Greek in him, so he might play for the Greek national team if they come for him first. Okay, the four signing and the last midfield position. So there's one defender, three midfielders, and one striker on here. So we'll hear the strikers soon, but Brad Inman is our midfielder for us. Brad Inman, or Braden Inman, as Wikipedia says, he actually is a midfielder. But in saying that, he has played centre mid, CDM, left mid, right mid, left mid and right mid more often than not the last few years. So for me, it looks like he'll probably be, if we sign him, he'll be used as a wing cover, centre mid cover, right mid cover. He won't be a starter. Same with maybe uh, George Mills. I can't see him being a starter technically, but I'd say that Aiden O'Neill, Tom Eldridge, and the next player I'll get to soon, which you've already, I've already heard, so I'll tell you anyway, Roy Dunham probably will be starters. So Brad Inman is a good player, and he's played for a lot of teams over in the League 1, League 2, and stuff like that. And he has scored a lot of goals, got a lot of assists, but in saying that, being wing positions, I'd say that's where Fowler will probably use his marquee deals. And we haven't heard any marquee deals yet so far, so I probably will probably hear them soon. But I'd say that Brad Eman probably will use as a a depth in positions as well as players and come off the bench and hopefully exert some energy onto the team and put some balls in the back of the net. So Brad Eman is six foot one, age twenty seven, and from Adelaide, South Australia. So like a lot of these players, actually, like he hasn't actually played in Australia before. Even though he's Australian, like Aiden O'Neill's played one game, one for one team in Australia, and George Mills has played also for Australia before in an, an Australian club. But Brad Inman has never played for an Australian team, so why not be the rule? Why not come in when Robbie Fowler's in there? Who knows? They might actually happen. But his last team he played for was Rochdale, where he's in the League One, where he could play 29 games, got four goals and three assists. That was on an actual deal. Before that, he played on a loan for them where he got 37 games. They played a lot of games that season, 2017-2018 season. 37 games, four goals, nine assists. He then played in 2016 and 2018. I don't know if he had an injury or whatever, but he didn't play that many games. He only played 11 games over two seasons for zero goals and three assists. And from 2012 to 2016, he had two stints with Crew Alexander, which is a League 2 side now. But before, he, when he did play, it was League 1. And he played 96 games in the last stint that he played for them with 15 goals and 11 assists. And his first stint that he played for them was 21 games, 5 goals and 0 assists. And funnily all enough, a bit like Aiden O'Neill, he was signed to a big team back in the day. So he was signed by Newcastle United, a Premier League club. Never actually played a game for them. And he did play his youth career at probably one of their academies in Newcastle United. I don't know how many academy games he played, probably quite a few, but never actually made the first team. Just was on loan with a lot of teams, which just seems to be the case with a lot of players over in England these days. Signed to a big team, get moved around. I know Chelsea moved a lot of players around. Lucas Piazon, I know one comes to mind where he gets moved every single season. Stays on the Chelsea books, but keeps moving. Club, 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 doesn't play any games with the senior team for the, his parent team, but plays a lot of games on loan and other teams. So Brad Inman actually would be a steal if we can get him for a price like that. He's the cheapest player and he's played a lot of games and as a, a player that I think that we'll probably use as cover in, probably a player off the bench, 200000 similar price to Conor O'Toole will be a steal for him. Played a lot of games overseas in um, teams in the League 1 and League 2, scored goals and assists. I, really like, I feel like he'll be a really good squad player for us and can bring a lot off the bench. I don't think as a starter, but I reckon that he'll be a good player to bring in. So like I said before, everyone's contract seems to be finishing at the 30th of June. He is the same. So his contract ends the 30th of June. So hopefully we pick him up around that time because obviously we pick him up on free. We don't have to pay transfer fee for him, which will be good. We don't have to pay his wages. So the Raw Supporters page actually released this story. So And he was actually released from Roachdale last week. So the story for that will be in the description below and um, you can have a look at that to see who he is and a bit of information about him as well. So he actually has played for the Scottish national team as well, but not the senior national team like most of these players haven't played for the actual senior team. He has played for the under-19s where he played seven games, got three goals, and for the Scottish under-21 team, he got two games with zero goals as well. But in saying that he is a Scottish Australian, his mum I think is Scottish, so he could play for the Scottish national team. Being Australian and being born in Australia, he probably would want to play for Australia. And he did get selected in a squad once where he was an unused substitute when Australia played England on my birthday, the 27th of May, 2016 in the 2-1 loss. So he was brought into the team, never brought on. So hopefully we can get him some more games in the future for the Socceroos. And hopefully we can come to our team this year and rock up the league.
And our final player is Roy O'Donovan. So he's the oldest player that we're looking at signing, but in saying that we have brought a lot of players down in age and like cutting out a lot of older players. So he'll be the experienced head up top. Even though he doesn't have the coolest of heads, Dylan Wayne's Halls will definitely benefit from it, having a, a, stri a striker up there that could provide goals as well as assists, as well as be a mentor to him. And hopefully, don't take him down the track of being a hothead, but hopefully teach him how to play the game better and score more goals and hopefully that can be a great strike force because I could definitely see Fowler playing two up front. So Roy Donovan, striker, 5'10", 33 years old, born in Cork, Ireland. So everyone will probably remember that he's played for two A-League teams. So he's played for the Newcastle Jets most recently where he played 34 games, 20 goals and 5 assists. And in 2015 to 2017, he played for the Mariners where he played 45 games for them, 19 goals and 3 assists. And also before he came to Central Coast Mariners, he had two, two one-year stints. So the first one was in Singapore and the last one was in Indonesia. So he had a bit of a holiday over there and a bit of a change up. And then now he's stayed in Australia for the last few years. And I think he's hopefully loving the life over here and hopefully will love life in Orange and put some lots of goals in the back of the net with Wenzel Halls. So Roy Donovan is one of the highest paid players that are on this list tied with Aidan O'Neill. He is 500,000 euros, so it's similar to Jamie Young. So obviously players like that that are valued at that price, you'd think Robbie Fellow will probably want him starting in their team. So I can definitely see him and Dylan Wenzel Hall starting up top together. And actually, instead of being on contract still to Newcastle Jets, he actually has been released already. So he's a free agent. And basically as soon as that deal came out where they said he was a free agent, and he has left, and he's not going to sign a deal with Newcastle Jets, and he's left. Basically, the story came out saying he's going to sign for the Raw. So, he won't be under marquee wages, which I'm hoping not. Like, if the Raw is stupid, they probably put him under marquee wages. But if he's the same price on the transfer market as Jamie Young, you'd think he wouldn't be a marquee. So, like I said before with Tom Eldridge, that the Corey Mal reported on the Roy Donovan and the Tom Eldridge signing in the same story. I'll still put the link on both of them. So I'll have Tom Eldridge link as well as I have Roy O'Donovan link. So you can click on it both. It'll be the same link anyway, just so then you knew about both the signings links. They're both there. So Roy O'Donovan's played for the under 21 national team for Ireland, where he's played eight games and got one goal. And then he played for the Republic of Ireland B team. So I guess it's where the older, too old to play for the youth teams, but they're, I don't know if they have a second team or whatever. But he played for the B team where he played two games and got zero goals. So I feel like all five of these players will be a good signing. So I definitely think that four of them probably will come, which will be Roy Donovan, Tom Eldridge, Aidan O'Neill, and George Mel. I'm not too sure about Brad Inman. Like there was a lot more information about the other signings than there was about Brad Inman. But I feel like if we get any of these players here, they'll be great assets to the team. They're young, most of them anyway. They've had experience over in the English leagues where it seems to be a lot more intense and aggressive and fast paced and a bit more rough compared to the A-League but in saying that that'll be a good style of play that we could have where they have a bit of brute force in our teams. So I'll put a photo up here of what I feel like our team will look like with these signings. So most of them are starting one player Brad Inman if he does sign will be on our bench. I feel like I'll have him at left mid. The rest of the players are here. So, so let me know what you think of these signings and if you don't think that some of these signings might come off. What do you think all these signings will come off? Who do you think will be the best signing for the Raw and what other players do you think might actually sign for the Raw? But anyways, this is Miss Oldie 7 8. I hope you liked this video. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, and I'm out. Peace.